Hello everyone and welcome back to my Ultimate JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we're going to try to send a Kerbal up into orbit and bring that Kerbal back down. But first, perhaps we should try to send something uncrewed, a probe, and especially since we seem to have to put a Kerbal in orbit for 30 days. That's a whole other story, incidentally. I mean, 30 days is a long time. And yeah, we'll uh, we'll try and get a probe into orbit first and make sure we can do that. And the probe, we'll try to make sure it's sort of simulating the capsule, I think, maybe. And then we'll see whether we can do that. I, I hope we can get 30 days worth of supplies and safety without too much trouble. It's a little bit hard to say. I mean, it's not like the first thing that the space group programs did was send, body, send somebody up for 30 days. I mean, that seems like a stretch, right? But anyway, we have the Mark 1 command pod unpressurized available. Uh, we may want to just use that, but it certainly doesn't have enough supplies. So we'll have a, a control core on top of it. And then uh, we could use that ultimately as a, uh, well, that's too big, uh, as a rescue pod in the end because we can launch it uncrewed and then bring it back crewed. Uh, maybe the, nav even the navigation side is pretty big. I don't think we've got like the hex or octo or any of those things yet, but we've sure got a lot of probe cores. <laughs> I mean, one of these must fit. No, this is pretty small. That's practically an octo kind of thing. Just has stability assist, but that's all we've needed so far. Okay, we'll tuck that in. And I'll just put it like that. It's not beautiful, but maybe it'll work. Do we need shielding for 30 days? Let's see, what does it have here? So, Kerbalism, it says it's two days worth of food, two days worth of water, two days worth of oxygen. That's obviously not going to be enough. And it's cramped with poor comfort. It's only 14 days worth of duration. So that's not good enough. Do we have some, some way of improving that? Let's see. Configure pod. Well, let's see. We've got a monoprop fuel cell. Let's say we're going to put solar panels on instead. Um, scrubber. Oh, we don't have anything else. Uh, maybe we should go to the research center and see if we can pick up some technology that's going to help make this a little bit less stressful. I mean, we've already got survivability though. We've got 25, so we can't get these sciences. Well, yeah, I don't see anything that specifically is going to help our Kerbals be happier. So, I'm not going to jump the gun and get one or the other of the sciences yet until we know what other needs we might have. Radiation wise, um, it says inner belt only four hours. Outer belt one day. Okay, and if I add some shielding, how do we do? Seems a little bit extreme, doesn't it? Nine hours. Okay, well, let's just... We need a pressurized pod. I mean, but with full shielding, this still only gives us one day in the inner belt. Six days in the outer belt, and then ten years in magnetopause. Now, when we launched a thing in the previous video, we only got signs from the magnetopause. Even though I had started the radiation experiment in low carbon orbit. So let's see where these belts are, maybe. Okay. Uh, pressing B brought this window up. Uh, let's... Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Inner belt. Well, that's, that's very inner. But, but I think it, the, the bottom layer of it is still higher than our low orbit. Let me not show the inner belt. That's really high, 10 rads per hour. The outer belt does seem to cover... 
Oh no, uh, it's more outer, okay. So it doesn't cover that area at all. And then Magneto Pause is like everything. So we'll just be dealing with the Magneto Pause as far as I can tell. As long as we stay low enough. 10 rads per hour though, I, I feel like that's much more than what the astronauts actually experience going through. That's a lot of rads. So maybe we don't need that much shielding? Let's see. Magneto pause two years. So, I mean, if we're going with that, then I don't need shielding on this pod. Now I'm gonna put half a blader. I don't think we're gonna need more than that. But we're gonna need more supplies for sure. Even if we're not going to go for the full amount of time. I don't think we need mod propellant. I mean, we could just go with the mod propellant fuel cell. I mean, well, we don't have any choice as to what else to put there anyway. Mod prop oxygen fuel cell though. See, now that's a little bit more complicated. It's mostly using oxygen. It's producing nitrogen though. We need a pressurization system. Let me see. Do we really not have... This this Hermes personal reentry capsule. Oh, that looks cheaty, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, isn't that really light? Hold on, hold on. This one... Sorry, let me get the Delta V stats out of the way. This one's 600. Well, at least this one's cheaper. But it's got fewer things, and it's 0.6533 tons. This Hermes thing... But darn it, I was going for the most optimal options, right? Right? That was the rule. Environment... Let's see... One malfunction per year is fine. Cramped, but duration is 149 days. And that's probably because it's got pressurization. Let's see, configure pod. Yeah, it's got pressure control. And it's got nitrogen here. Uh, we'll take... Well, we'll leave Jeb in there and make sure we have enough food, water, and oxygen. Um, can I just type in food? Nope, I can't type in food. Life support. Oh, um, pressurized tank supply container. Stop being perpetual. Every time I take the pod off, it removes Jeb. At uh, 27 days, so... But no oxygen, apparently. Well, that's no good. Wet waste, waste, and sewage. Do we, strictly speaking, need to have containment for that stuff or not? Okay, now food, 27 days, water, 21, oxygen, 48. I think the Geiger counter would be a helpful experiment to have on here, even though we aren't planning... What does Space Global anyway... Uh, what does Space Global mean anyway? But yeah, I think the Geiger counter is probably the best instrument for us, even though we've done it in the magnetosphere already. Okay, now we've got 54 days of food, 51 days of oxygen... Uh, sorry, 51 days of water and 48 days of oxygen, thanks to these side-mounted ones. Let's try this one. Okay, right, well that's about the right idea. It says that the uh, life support consumes 0.043 per second. That doesn't seem too much. And then once we extend these, we're producing enough. Except it says per perpetual when they're retracted. And only two hours when they're not. Um, isn't this the opposite of how it is supposed to work? <laughs> We'd like something with a little bit more thrust. Maybe we should just get six of these. It's expensive, but it's a crude mission, actually. Oh, maybe we can have the Agena plus two. That'd be good. I may have to think about a launch escape system. <laughs> oh, we're not really doing a launch escape system, are we? Ooh. We haven't had any engine failures so far. You know it's saving one up. Well, actually putting these boosters on puts us over mass. 
Okay, well, in order to get this under our 18 ton limit and still have the boosters, I have underfueled the boosters, I've eliminated the mod propellant there, I've made sure that our food, water, and oxygen is really just 30 days worth, uh, 32 days of food, 31 days of water, and 34 days of oxygen, so we've undersupplied this stuff here. And I've cut the ablator down to 80, and so we've, we've cut everything, and... Yeah, we're just barely under uh, the 18 ton limit, and I don't know if we have enough Delta V, so it's probably a good idea not to have Jeb there. So, and we also have to deorbit with this engine, uh, well, this stage too. We can shut down the core engine eventually, and then just use the more efficient finches. So, there's that. Uh, oh, why is it reading even less mass than I expected there? Oh, well, anyway, 25 parts. And I don't know what to call it. Well, we'll just call it after the a pod. Hermes, fine. So Hermes 1. Okay, and what we want to do is fulfill the return to Kerbin from orbit contract. I did just outright delete the city lights configuration for JNSQ. We've still got our little pattern here though. Uh, that wasn't uh, one of the artifacts that was being talked about in relation to sea lights though. We'll see whether that has worked out or not. Take a look at how much stuff we've had to cut back on to make this work out. But uh, okay, I don't even know where the two mod propellant is. And this is probably not supposed to happen here. No, we just don't want those to happen at all. Okay, well, here we go. Roll up and go. Very vigorous. Hopefully that'll help us get to orbit with the Delta V that we've got. No, oh, no, there's more artifacting. Guys, it's not the city lights thing. Maybe I should just delete the city lights DLL from EVE. <laughs> I don't know, this is bad. This is worse, actually. Okay. Hopefully that was the planned shutdown of those. Okay, well, everything looking nominal so far. Okay, separation and ignition. I'm pretty sure the, uh, the little ones probably are making more sound. I don't know, I can't tell. It's always the little ones that make more sound. Okay, I think we'll cruise on Finch Power. Uh, not great timing for comms, though. I'm gonna use the main engine just so we finish sooner. And... Shut down. 114 by 83.8. And let's start radiation testing. Well, I mean, but we got all the info, so... Well... I wish it would display how much radiation we were getting, because that's sort of important. Okay, do we need to... Oh, we lost comms. Just in time, we, uh, we finished. I'm not too sure if we need to extend some antennae or how it's gonna be, but anyway, we'll have crew on it eventually. But the electric charge isn't recharging right now, we need to reorient. And we can't really, really test the power situation without a Kerbal in taking up the life support, right? Oh, that was a little bit of a issue there. Okay, so if we're pointed at the sun right now, I feel like we were recharging better at, on a different orientation, but this is okay. Where is the two units of our propellant? It's in this probe core for some reason. Interesting. Okay, well, let's see if we can bring this back down quickly. As close to the KSC as possible, too. Okay, we can do it now, maybe. Off goes our stage. Got. Set the parachute to 0.23, I'll say arm, 
and we are going to go retrograde and hope that everything is okay and we can retract the solar panels oh we can't retract the solar panels they are always open once they're deployed well there's gonna be some minor explosions I mean, I completely deleted the J and SQC lights thing, so whatever is going on here, hopefully the atmosphere will handle orienting this properly. Well, we're losing a blader quite quickly. Quicker than expected, actually. Come on, SAS, give up. Okay, this goes one solar panel. That a blader though. That's worrisome. What if we're coming back from somewhere serious? Nope, the blader has gone. We sure needed all of it. Okay, well, um, that one broke because the arrow force is instead of heat. That's interesting. I mean, I think we'll survive, but I don't know about that ablation calculation. And we have had a lot more drag than I expected, so we're landing short of the KSC. And we're not going to have comms or anything. Because I was thinking that we would get there to pick up the satellite overhead. But we've armed the parachute, so maybe it's okay? Well, parachute has pre-deployed. Okay, this is just ridiculous. Oh, this uh, parachute's OP for this one. But no, this is unacceptable. Okay. We are on the surface and recover. So, is that safe for a Kerbal? It seems like we can do it. But there are things that we can't really test until we put a Kerbal in, right? Well, we got some science out of that. We got the credit and everything. Carbon flying high, too. I had left a radiation scan on. Okay, so we got some extra science. We can actually unlock both of these now. I'll just go ahead and do that. Okay, so before launching Jeb on our first crewed mission, I decided to try to just delete see lights.dll from the eve folder uh, just to verify that in fact uh, the little artifact you can sort of see some of it in the distance there is not due to city lights at all because we don't have the dll in the eve folder at all anymore so it's something else that's causing this and i will do some more experimentation after i finish with this episode to see what it might be but yeah it's, it's not the city lights that's causing this problem Anyway, we are going to, I gotta edit that as well, uh, we are going to pick up this contract, which only offers trivial prestige for putting a Kerbal in orbit for 30 days. That's uh, it's a hard one to believe, but yeah, we are going to do that. We're gonna put Jeb in the Hermes one and see what happens. And this is still here. <laughs> Oh, uh, I don't even know where to begin with half of this stuff. Okay, so throttle up, SAS on, right, here goes nothing, ignition. Yep, and it sort of stays on the ground for a while and then it starts following us. Gotta figure it out somehow. Okay, nominal shutoff of the SRVs. Couldn't they have just let us send them up for one day first? Okay, almost the end of the stage. And separation and ignition. Okay, all engines are on. Well, I'll actually take the apoapsis for now and we'll restart with just... Uh, small engines. Okay, ignition. 
Okay. Can return. And shut down. We'll keep it like that. 105 by 89. And we've got 217 meters per second left. Let's get the solar panels out. Well, that's pretty good. Body's sort of in the way, but we're recharging. So we're recharging despite all the life support systems. And... We don't have comms, but that hardly matters at this point. We do have 30 days. And the nitrogen is fine. It's cramped and horrible. Hopefully, Jeb will not go crazy. Well, Jeb might have started out crazy, but that's a whole other story. Well, it's not ticking down the 30 days, which worries me. I mean, I would like a timer on that. But, all right. Well, it's been nine minutes. <laughs> Let's go to the tracking station and time warp for three days and see what happens, I suppose. Okay, so we're on day six, hour one. Hopefully Kerbalism will give us warnings before anything tragic happens. Why does it not seem to have a little icon for the Hermes? Isn't that weird? Right? I mean, it's clearly supposed to be right there. And we've got ships highlighted, and it clearly says it's a ship. Why does it not have an icon? Radiation. Oh, stress is going up really fast. Losing his mind. Concentration is becoming a problem. Only 3% radiation, though. But... I don't know. Well, it's been 17 days. Oh, no, it's been uh, 11 days. It's been... Oh, wait. It's day 17, but the food, water, and oxygen is way low. It said we had 30 days worth, but... Oh, um, maybe I've got 24-hour days up there? Because, uh, you know, normally I bring in my settings file from other installs, and maybe because I was doing Earth, I had... I have 24 hour days set. Maybe that's why. Food reserves are getting low. Well, well, we'll wait till they're really low. So we're looking for 15 days or day 21 or something like that. Water reserves are getting low. Well, so, I mean, this is getting more stressed than we were expecting. Considering it said that he could be on there for 100 days. Well, it's 15 day days. Oh, okay, I think it has it. Yeah, put a Corbett, uh, Kerbal in orbit for 30 days. So we'll have to remember that I've got 24 hour days here. I should probably reset that. But uh, So it's only 15 days corresponds to 30 days for JNSQ. We've got 12 hour days here. Okay, we fulfilled the contract. It didn't actually require us to bring the Kerbal back down. This is our only crewed contract available. And they didn't even require us to bring the Kerbal back down. That's a little bit weird. <laughs> That's a little bit un uh, disconcerting. But we will bring Jeb back down, thank you very much. In whatever mental state Jeb happens to be in. They had him losing his mind at only 33%, which is shocking too. He's at 44% now. Well, looking at it, maybe the maybe the artifacting is due to the shadows from the clouds. When you see where they are, They're, they seem to be under the high concentrations of clouds. See that? And then in areas that don't have much clouds, there's no artifacting there. So that's that's my theory right now. Okay, well, we would like to get him back to the KSC, but the KSC is in darkness right now. I don't know how much longer he can hang out. We are really low on stuff. Well, even though the KSC is in darkness, we'll bring him down. Let's charge up a bit first. We could have done some science. Let's do some science. Crew report. 
Go for that. Wonder if he's still of sound mind to have any cogent observations. Doesn't seem to be transmitting, and I don't have any extend antenna option there. So, well, anyway, we can just bring it back down either way, so that's fine. I haven't unlocked the astronaut complex for EVAs, so yeah. Okay, we're about a quarter of Kerbin, less than a quarter of Kerbin away from the KSC. We're going to deorbit, set to 30 kilometers, and see where that gets us. 30 kilometer periapsis. Which is less steep than last time. And... Jettison? We are lighter than last time, because food, water, and oxygen have been consumed. Okay, here we go. Yeah, we're gonna overshoot, probably. But that's alright, maybe we'll end up in the water between the KSC and the island runway. Still no way to retract the solar panels. And still the ablator is going by real fast. Okay, we have re-entry effects. And plasma blackout. And overheating down there right now. The, they haven't even gotten the solar panels, what gives? And we've still got a blader too. And we're apparently through the plasma blackout, that's impressive. Yeah, I don't know how anything in Kerbal works. I uh, don't know why those solar panels are still there. And the overheating is gone. Just in time for the ablator to be gone. Oh, uh, now it's... Yeah, I got one of the solar panels. And... The other solar panel. Well, it's about time. The ablator is sort of useless, I feel like. There's something fundamentally wrong about how this is working out with the ablator. Well, there are those ice flows again, so we must be in the right area. <laughs> uh, we are in fact landing between the KSC and the island airfield. I don't know why there are these things at the equator. This is strange. I'm sure there's a backstory or something, but... Some weird ecological thing. Kerbin is going through. Okay, we've got parachute pre-deployment. I mean, really, these little things have been my big problem, right? I mean, well, at least on launch, the fact that we see this sort of pattern on launch sort of connected to these things existing, I suppose. Okay. And our speed is going to be just fine. And we are in fact above water, though barely. I mean, I, it's really close to that little ice island there. Maybe we'll land on it. Maybe Jeb will meet a polar bear. Or the Kerbal equivalent, Kerbin equivalent. Uh, yep. Yeah. Gotta be landing on the ice. Might be safer. No chance of sinking or anything. And, oh, there's a chance of sinking. <laughs> we we went right through. That so it's non-collidable ice flows. All right, so noted. Recover vessel. Okay, well we got a, a science for it and some other science recovered for the crew report. We continued the crew report while it was flying in the atmosphere. So, and we didn't quite finish some of it. And we got ninety point eight percent of our value back. And of course, Jeb was recovered and got 2 XP. So, we did good work here. We did not kill Jeb. And we will see what happens in the next video. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.